You're watching TVC Breakfast and it's time to take a look at stories making headlines on Nigerian newspapers. I have in the studio chatted accountant is also a public affairs analyst, Jason Okwadi. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. Table. Thank God it's Friday. Really good to see you. Joining us via Zoom is chatted mediator and consulator, Chris Kende Mwandu. Welcome to the program. Thank you, my sister. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Right. So let's um, check out the papers this morning, beginning with Nigerian Tribune, captioning its lead story as Decisive Weekend, APC, PDP, pick presidential candidates, about 3,000 delegates to vote for Oshibaju, Tinubu, Lawan, Amechi, Atiku, Saraki, Wike, and others. Hotels in Abuja fully booked. President Buhari jets out to Equatorial Guinea and a host of other stories. Uh, there on the front page of Nigerian Tribune. This Nigeria's next PDP APC primaries, Abuja Agog, as politicians take over the federal capital territory. It's also a battle of posters, banners everywhere, uh, according to this Nigeria aspirants in last minute lobby of delegates. Let's go to Blueprints now, 72 hours to the APC presidential primaries. Fear, anxiety over party state of preparedness. That's um, blueprints. They're narrowing it down to uh, the APC. For the Daily Sun, it's still on the APC presidential primary with Lawan Oshiba, Jotinubu, Onu Amechi, and uh, Umahi said to be looking strong. President Buhari and party elders are also reported to be working towards a consensus. And former president, uh, Jonathan, condemning party primaries uh, with knocks on lawmakers. That's for Daily Sun. To Daily Trust now, APC presidential ticket Buhari meets governors, mom of on preferred candidate, leaves aspirants, others guessing as he goes off to Malabo in Equatorial uh, Guinea for AU summit. The Guardian is also uh, captioning its uh, headline as uh, 48 hours to the APC primary uh, to pick a flag bearer, another shift likely over absence of screening and convention committees. Stakeholders decry lull in convention activities. Uh, delay is strategic. That's according to an official of the Bello campaign group. For FIEMI, he says no cause for alarm over consensus candidate. Well, the punch is uh, giving us a post-mortem, so to speak, on uh, Thursday's governorship primaries in the APC. It says a fresh crisis may hit uh, the ruling party with factions boycotting polls and threatening suits. Lagos aspirants protest exclusion, uh, while uh, Governor Sonwulu Abiodun Omo Agege uh, Matawali, others win. Uh, with Abe Ogun Sokoto aspirants allege fraud, threaten uh, suits, Kiyamu, Ojobo, others absent. Nigerian News Direct is uh, the next paper to look at, uh, also counting down to the general election. Governor Sonwulu, Abiodu, Omagege, and others clinch APC's uh, Guba tickets. Still the same slant for the nation, uh, also giving us an analysis uh, and report on uh, the victories of Governor Sonwulu, Abiodu, and Abdul Razak as they get to. Uh, remain the flag bearers of their parties. It's also said to be a clean sweep for governors. And um, INEC is saying that only results of monitored polls will be acceptable. The leadership is um, leading with 811 PDP delegates said to be in a moment of decision uh, and a catalog on how 14 aspirants stand. First news is next uh, yet another report on uh, the position of former president jonathan who declared the apc pdp primaries a mess and a charade daily times gives us a different uh, slant it's uh, on the drug trafficking trial of uh, Abba Kiari. He says his life is in court, in prison, and has now written to uh, the court now to reconsider his bail application. Finally, at this time, uh, well, Business Day and National Economy, looking at Business Day, uh, of course, on the economy, FG gas producers in talks over new LNG trains and uh, National 
economy says it's uh, optimistic for higher returns in stocks as investors earn 1.1 trillion naira. Gentlemen, there we have it, all the papers there, most of them understandably uh, taking us back to the issue of politics. But Shesho, if I would, you know, also tap your brains as to how you have viewed uh, the primaries uh, so far, what would it be? Yeah, uh, if you look at the gubernatorial uh, primaries that we had, it's the usual thing that we're used uh, to of the way we carry out some of these things. But people like us, the young ones, have actually been advocating for people introducing technology and uh, uh, believing that the introduction of technology will minimize uh, mm -hmm. some of the crises that we do face. Uh, you can imagine uh, the clock that you are reading about with the primaries coming up in uh, Abuja. All the hotels are fully booked, uh, activities are granted here and there, people need to travel, I'm sure. You are the economist, that should, <laughs> it, that, that, should that be a plus? Does it well, mean well, it's a plus? It's not, it's not a plus to us because as we speak, economy is not really going anywhere. Everybody is concentrating on election, election, election. But you discover that an average person that should have stayed in his office and carry out some of this uh, thing, like uh, Bola, Bola Oba said the other time, if this thing are uh, digitalized, even though we don't uh, have it in our constitution, we've been advocating for this. Let individual that you carry out some of this election without anybody knowing the election is going on. We must not draw all the activities here. You see people saying they want to buy a people start killing themselves, start fighting themselves. When you can just, you are not even, whether it's direct primary, indirect primary, you stay at the comfort of your home, press the button and pick whoever you want to pick. And we have the result. And you look at the cost implication with that. It's, you can't merge it with somebody risking his life, you know, putting so many things at stake, all because we want to and go we for have primaries. The machinery. All the things right. are there, just like right. they said. If okay. you can comfortably do what you want to do on your banking system, it's to tell you that the technology and the infrastructure is there. Right. It's just the political will to bring some of these things to bear. All, all right, that said, uh, we'll get um, Chris Kende's um, analysis after the break. Please stay with us for more on TVC Breakfast. Thanks a lot for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. Let's get uh, more analysis of the lead stories in Nigerian newspapers this morning. CKN is standing by. Uh, so, so what do you think uh, when you look at the role of money uh, in the primary so far? I mean, just last night, Banky W also, you know, you know, reacting vociferously, uh, saying first he won and now he's seen he didn't. Uh, his name doesn't appear among the list of winners of tickets. Well, um, I'll tell you, uh, uh, my sister, that um, the delegates are the one cashing out now. They are really cashing, they are real money, putting naira and dollars. Uh, they are making money from all the various aspirants, uh, not just one particular aspirant. They collect from A, they go to B, they collect C, D, and the rest of them. And the aspirants are trying to match each other or outdo each other, nairally or dollarly, whichever way you, they try to. I describe it. But that is the politics we, we, we find ourselves. Uh, we are playing politics of money. If you don't have money, it's obvious that you will not be able to be a participant in the Nigerian politics. One of the reasons given by P2P for living PDP is that they cannot match the financial um, uh, expectation of most of the delegates or the people. And it's so obvious that, um, don't forget that so many people have termed uh, P2P as stingy, quote and unquote who believes in managing money and making sure that it does not just pay money. He believes that if you want to vote for me, vote for me for what I am and who I am and what I can be able to bring to the table. But that, has, that is beyond Nigerian's politics. Mm. If you don't have money, then you are nowhere, which is why younger people like us cannot have the opportunity, except we have godfathers that can be able to put us forward. Definitely, we don't have the uh, war chest to be able to financially to be able to engage in any form of politics. And I ask myself, what is the essence of the not too young uh, to run um, uh, law that was, um, signed, uh, that was signed into law? What is the essence? If the younger ones cannot have the opportunity to be able to participate, you, won't even be, you can't even compete. If you look at the number of delegates that you have to bribe uh, or uh, induce or try to engage, then you'll be shocked that uh, even for you to run for the House of Assembly um, seat, uh, it's run is too, 
is run into millions and, uh, and billions. Most of the people now even participating, you see them after this election. Some of them will have heart attacks, some may have stroke, some might even die out of shock because so they are borrowing so much to be able to participate. And if they don't get this, then there is a problem. And that is why when these people get there, they don't even listen to you. They don't listen to us. They are not there to represent us. They are there to represent their pocket because what they have made is an investment which they must recoup. It's just like a return on investment we what we call ROI uh, in, in business. So that is what happened. But right. good enough, um, the political parties, the APC and the PTP, since we're getting their ass together, I next said that those the date set as uh, set for the deadline is sacrosanct. So whether they don't like it or not, they must meet that. And that is why all the political parties are running around, all the registered political parties are running around and trying to make sure that they meet that deadline. But, Within the next but, few but, years, we're going to know the pressure. Yes, but when you look at, you know, the, the deadline, uh, President, uh, former President Jonathan, you know, you know, made the news uh, today when he said, amongst other things, that um, INEC shouldn't be the one determining how, uh, you know, the window, of course, they can create a window, so to speak, but, you know, this close call that we see bet between both parties also put some kind of unhealthy pressure on the political parties he's clamoring that should maybe they should be you know given a leeway to determine how they want to do it thereby easing the pressure off on their necks as we see what do you think Cheso? yeah uh, i don't think INEC is putting pressure on anybody uh, we all know the slogan that he will fail to plan definitely will plan towards failure they brought out their uh, uh, election calendar who were well ahead of time for everybody to plan Work their with. days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you are not working in line, it's just like uh, an examiner setting up the timetable for you to write an exam. And all because you are passing up and down, you didn't read your book, you are now saying they are putting pressure on you for an exam you write tomorrow. That I will not support. On the path of, I think INEC is doing the right thing by saying that some of the day they have actually fixed because. We, uh, as far as the, uh, the, the whole world is looking at us, the African uh, community has seen us as giant and looking at us. So if we have the timetable and people, because of lack of planning, are uh, asking for extension and other things to do, I will not be a party to that. If you refuse to do what is needful, according to the timetable of uh, INEC, it's just as if you are going for your exam. You feel you get out of it and the better people who have the plan, because if you're talking of this thing, Planning as a leader is one of the key factors that we expect you to do. So if you are not ready to work in line with the uh, uh, timetable of INEC, and because of that, you fall out of uh, place, well, so be it. That is what is obtainable for every student that prepares for exam. You always have a timetable. So I won't support the uh, aspect of uh, the former president saying that INEC is putting pressure because of the timetable, saying some of those things are sacrosanct. I think for the first time, on my part, I will give it to INEC again by saying that let them stick, you know, to what they have said as regards this timetable. Because anything to alter it will definitely affect so many other things that they are put in plan. And that might distort uh, some of the things that we are speculating that possibly uh, some are already speculating election may not all this. And once you start authoring the calendar, it will definitely affect the end result of what we are going to say. Let INEX stick as they have said. And any party that could not comply with it is taken as some of the people that go and write exam unprepared and they fail. So okay. once you fail, you get out of it and the better candidate will take the lead. CK, and what do you think as to the role INEC has played so far uh, in this uh, critical electoral process? Well, uh, I think uh, for me, uh, they tried so far. They tried, and um, it seems to be on course. And um, just as Jason said, the, the INEC has been given the statutory function of determining the timetable for um, these primaries and the election, and they are the umpire. And um, so, um, asking the asking for a postponement is neither here nor there. It's like going for a football match, and you said that each team should determine when they want to play. If I'm an Arsenal, if I'm Arsenal, and I decide to play on Friday, and Chesson is a uh, man you, um, I decide to play on Saturday. So what happens? We're not still going to balloting or what? No, that's, I think we should follow that to the letter. I think so far, um, to me, they have tried. But the problem I'm having is that how I think is going to be able to handle issues where you have factions. There have instances where you have the states 
having factions and uh, passional primaries. For instance, in Ogu State, we heard that um, the PDP in Ogu State um, came up with about uh, three, uh, three uh, governor uh, aspirants or candidates or winners. How will INEC be able to resolve that? Because the, uh, the, the, the electoral has said that INEC must be an observer at the primaries of the parties. And where INEC is not available, then that primary could be seen as being null and void. So, um, like the one who said, did INEC attend all the three um, um, areas where you had primaries? That is the problem. Then we also seen instances where some candidates were prevented from um, entering even to the, uh, enter the venue of the primaries. Uh, we've had the story coming in from Lagos where a candidate was, we were told, and we had, not allegedly, uh, not confirmed, was not allowed into the venue of the primary yesterday where the governor was, uh, where the uh, criteria candidate of the APC was picked. Then that is going to be the challenge for the INEC. So we might see a lot of litigation coming up here and there after right. these primaries. But the fact remains that so far, INEC is doing a good job. For me. All right, we'll, we'll see how, how it all uh, pans out in the end. Gentlemen, I'm afraid we've run out of time. Uh, but then uh, the good thing is we can always, you know, meet again uh, by God's grace to talk about these and other issues. Uh, Chesson Okwade and uh, Chris Kendo Wando, many thanks uh, for your time with us. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. And you too.